I don't even own a home right now. Um, I'm literally staying at friends' places. I, I basically rotate through friends' spare bedrooms. Um, I, I really don't take vacations. There, there are just times when something is important enough, you believe in it enough that you, you do it in spite of the fear. If you just, if you just accept the probabilities, um, then that diminishes fear. Uh, so, um, when starting SpaceX, I thought the odds of success were less than 10%. Um, and I just accepted that actually probably I would just lose, lose everything. Um, but that maybe we would make some progress. If we could just move the ball forward, even if we died, maybe some other company could pick up the baton and move and keep moving it forward. Um, so that would still do some good. Um, yeah, same with Tesla. I thought you know, the odds of a car company succeeding were extremely low. People shouldn't think, I, I, I feel fear about this and therefore I shouldn't do it. Um, it's normal to, be, to feel fear. Like you'd have to, there'd be something mentally wrong if you didn't feel fear. If somebody is doing something that is useful to the, the rest of society, I think that's a good thing. Like it doesn't have to change the world. Like, you know, um, if you're doing something that has high value to, to people, um, I do not expect to be involved in all these things. The, the five things that I thought about at the time in, in college, which was quite a long time ago, uh, 25 years ago, um, you know, being, you know, making life multi-planetary, um, accelerating, accelerating the transition to sustainable energy, um, the, the internet, broadly speaking, um, and, and then genetics and AI. I think um, I didn't expect to be involved in in, in, in all of those things. I actually, at the time in college, I, I sort of thought um, helping with electrification of, of, of cars was, was how I would start out. And that's, uh, I, I really was just trying to be useful. That's the optimization. It's like, what, what, are the, what can I do that would actually be useful? How, how should someone figure out how they can be most useful? Uh, whatever this thing is that you're trying to create, what would, what would be the um, utility delta compared to the current state of the art? times how many people it would affect. So that's why I think um, having something that has a, that's, that has a, makes, makes a big difference but affects a sort of small to moderate number of people is great, as is something that makes e even a small difference but, it, uh, but affects a vast number of people. What set of actions are most likely to lead to a better future? You know, in, in order for, one of the things obviously in order for, to, for humanity to have a compelling future for civilization is that we must have a clear path to a sustainable energy future. Stakes are very extremely important, <laughs> very fundamental to the future. I try to say what I what I think is, uh, you know, scientifically cogent, even if it is not popular. Some things are risky, but if the you know if, if the stakes are important enough, then you take the risk. Well, I think there's probably a lot of people in this room that do take a lot of risks. Anyway, I literally just try to use the scientific method, frankly, and you know consider the you know what what is the importance of the outcome and. What, what is one risking in, to, in order to achieve that outcome? And, uh, but like I said, if the outcome is important enough, even if the probability of success is low, one must, I think, still, still do it. Mm -hmm. Some things are very important and if, <laughs> to, in order to have a good future, and if we don't do them, well, then we're in big trouble. And so, I, and then, then how much of a risk really is it? Because if we don't take those actions, we won't have a good future. Um, and I think the riskiest thing would be no action. There's still a long way to go uh, to transition the world to a sustainable energy economy. And so, so, so we, we still have a lot of work ahead of us at Tesla, but that's, that's our goal there. And then for SpaceX, um, I think it's important for, for, the future to, for the future to be exciting and for humanity's um, existence to be in, ensured over the long term. I think we must become a multi-planet species and a space-bearing civilization. We've basically just been here for a very brief instant. We're, a, a blink. A bl we're, all of human civilization is a blink of an eye, if there was an eye, <laughs> in, in, in the, on the evolutionary time scale. So, so I think it's important we take the actions to ensure that the light of consciousness continues. And, and because you should, we should really view consciousness as, as a, a small candle in a vast darkness. So, and it so could easily go out. I actually think we're on a good path, um, I, I, but at the same time, I, I want to want to caution against complacency. So, so long as we are not complacent, as long as we are have a high sense of urgency about moving towards a sustainable uh, energy economy, then I think things will be fine. Yeah.
Um, so I, I, I can't emphasize that enough. So long as we uh, push hard uh, and are not complacent, um, the, the future's going to be great. The, the thing that is actually uh, more, more difficult and, and that does make sleeping difficult is that um, you know, every good hour uh, or even minute of thinking about uh, Tesla and, and SpaceX has such a big effect on the company that I, I really try to work as, as, as much as possible uh, you know, to, to the edge of sanity, basically. In fact, I don't even own a home right now. Um, I'm literally staying at friends' places. I, if I travel to the Bay Area, which, which where most of Tesla engineering is, I, I stay in my, I basically rotate through friends' spare bedrooms. Um, I don't have a yacht. I, I really don't take vacations. Uh, so um, it's, not, it's not as though there's, um, that, that my personal consumption is, is high. Uh, with the, I mean, the one exception is a plane, but if I don't use the plane, then I have less hours to work. I really want to make sure that there is a good future for humanity um, and that we're on a path to understanding the nature of the universe, um, the meaning of life, why are we here, how do we get here. And in order to understand the nature of the universe and all these fundamental questions, um, we must expand the scope and scale of consciousness. We, certainly it must not diminish or go out. We, we, we certainly we won't understand this. So I, I would say I'm motivated by curiosity more than anything um, and uh, just a uh, desire to think about the future and not be sad, you know. And, and are you? Are you not sad? I'm sometimes sad. I, I, mostly I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm feeling, I guess, relatively optimistic about the future these days. Um, there are certainly um, some big risks that humanity faces. Uh, I think the, the population collapse is a really big deal that um, I wish more people would would, would think about because um, the, the birth rate is far below as, uh, what's needed to sustain civilization at its current, at its current level. You know, there's obviously, um, we, we need to take action on climate sustainability, which is, is, how, is, is being done. Um, and we need to secure the future of consciousness by being a multi-planet species. I, I think if you, if you care about the reality of goodness instead of the perception of it, philanthropy is extremely difficult. Um, SpaceX, Tesla, Neuralink, and Boring Company are philanthropy. If you say philanthropy is love of humanity, um, they are philanthropy.